I would like to thank Aubrey and the organizers around him for inviting me. I'm coming from a different community, a tissue engineering community. Uh, we have our own meetings and due to Aubrey, now I have the pleasure to be partially part of this community and it just is very clear that we have a lot to teach each other and uh, it would be really great if we could in integrate and put together our efforts. So this is what I'm trying to do. Uh, the answer that Augustine gave to my question, what are the limitations, he said, well at this point we cannot repair organs. So I feel good because this is what I'm going to talk about. So here is the story uh, about two or three years ago in the United States. Uh, there are many, many people who are waiting for replacement organs and the sources for that are limited. And uh, one new approach is tissue engineering. It's been around for a while. It has not produced uh, uh, too many spectacular results, but I show you here too. And uh, one of them is a bladder that has been implanted uh, into pediatric patients. And the other one is a tracheal segment uh, that uh, I, I, it's a pleasure for me and an honor to know that the next speaker is from the group that published this result. So there are some spectacular results, but this technique has some serious limitations. And the limitations stem uh, from the fact that if you want to create or engineer a, a full organ, solid organ, like liver, uh, spleen, then you will have to incorporate the vasculature even before you implant your engineered product. And we don't know how to do that. There are incredibly sophisticated or less sophisticated methods. People use uh, their fantasy, starting from cotton candy machines, to using the lightning, analogies with lightning. Maybe some of you have read about those, but the fact is that we don't know how to do that. Now, uh, I just throw in uh, our approach. This is just the schematics, and then we'll go from here uh, in more details. What we are going to do, we're going to print uh, as a piece of a tissue, depending on what you want to do, of course. Uh, the cellular units are going to be made or composed of those cells that, that, that you are targeting, uh, there will be components, either fully biological channels, or for the time being, uh, porous membranes through which this tissue is going to be perfused prior to implantation. Because you have to mature this structure, uh, no surgeon will take it right away, you have to convince the surgeon in, in particular about the biomechanical properties that it is ready to be implanted. So it is a complex scheme. Uh, I'm going to target uh, just one segment today. Uh, it is this uh, fully biological blood vessel. And uh, scaffold-based tissue engineering is the classical one that we heard. Uh, the the paradigm, is, paradigm is there that is that you put the cells into some biocompatible uh, extracellular matrix-like mimic and then you expand the cells and when everything is going well, eventually you take the tissue and you implant. Uh, that, that method has a number of uh, deficiencies. I'm not going to go through that, but uh, uh, this one is fully biological and uh, does not suffer from most of those deficiencies that uh, is, is known to affect classical tissue engineering. So, after I have put the talk into, hopefully, into some perspective, I'm going to talk about the technology which we built uh, such tissues, or rather the, the, the blood vessels, and uh, I'm going to talk about the underlying science, and finally I show you the outcome. So the, the story starts with this, uh, with this caricature. We have some convenient units uh, which we call bio-ink. In this case, those are spherical aggregates of many thousands of cells. Again, the composition is defined by what you want to build. And in this case, I show you how we build one way of building a blood vessel. We deposit those, uh, those units. Uh, they can be spherical, they can be cylindrical units. And uh, once they are deposited, they fuse. 
And uh, in, during this fusing process, fusion process, the, the structure, the biological structure forms. So at the first sight, it sounds simple. Now this one here is a real, is a real um, bio unit or bioing. This, this one is made of uh, human smooth muscle cells. It's one of the, the ingredients that we use in our process. So then we package, once we have these bioing particles, we package them into a cartridge. A bio cartridge, we put those cartridges into a printer, special purpose delivery machines. We have, uh, that, that was an evolution, there's been an evolution in this, uh, in this field. And uh, we deposit, those are all computer driven, uh, sophisticated machines. Uh, I don't want this to go again, but it doesn't matter. And finally, uh, I'm showing you here one of, the, one of the circles here, those are real cells deposited with this machine and then finally they fuse. So this is one way of doing things. And, um, and then I show you another way because this is what I'm going to uh, concentrate from now on. This shows you a design template that we nowadays use, it is, it is patented uh, to build the blood vessels. So uh, we use again cylindrical units, there are um, what I call the bio paper units, those are supporting materials, again bio-friendly, this is not a scaffold, as you will see. In, in, in our case, most of the time it's agarose, so those are agarose rods. We deposit again the bio particles according to this template, and eventually uh, we'll let the units to, to, to fuse. And uh, you can do all kinds of variations on this theme, you can even build branching structures, which we have done. So, uh, the same scheme can be used for cylindrical buying, buying units and those are even more adaptable, more practical for our purposes. Agarose is a good substance because cells do not invade agarose, so they only communicate with each other and you, one really gets the structure that one wants to. Uh, okay, moves. So here is the implementation of this uh, design template. Uh, this guy is uh, sucking up the agarose, the liquid agarose. Then it goes into, by the way, this is just mimicking what is going on. Cools down the agarose and then starts printing. Here, the blue guys are the agarose rods, the white ones are the cellular rods. And you can see, I think this was the middle. Uh, we are somewhere here. And now comes the top. And then things are finished. Um, and the structure is done. So at least the printing is complete. So once this is complete, we have no structure yet. So then comes the fusion of those buying particles. And before I go into that, so I'll uh, just show you what the future is going to be with this layer and by layer construction. So eventually we will just build the entire thing. So, <laughs> If, you, if we talk about a blood vessel, a blood vessel is more complex. It's not a single layer structure. Uh, in fact, it, uh, it consists of three layers. Uh, this one shows how to build a two layer structure. And then we use uh, another morphogenetic process, which is called uh, sorting. Take two kinds of cells, let them sort. Uh, here you see smooth muscle cells and endothelial cells, or fibroblasts and endothelial cells. So we put those units together, they again fuse, this shows an early attempt, and this shows that the endothelial cells indeed go in the middle and they sort out even in this, uh, in this cylindrical configuration. Uh, why they don't show up here is probably due to the fact that here the inner agarose rod is still there, which we can easily pull out, but that helps. Uh, we can build in many other ways multi-layered structures. Here is another way of doing it. Uh, you can take one kind of cells. Here, in fact, it's uh, smooth muscle cells and fibroblasts. And uh, this, after fusion, it shows uh, the histological uh, images, H&E, uh, uh, smooth muscle actin, and caspase. Or there is another way of doing it, and this is a very successful method that goes uh, to a company called Cytograft, uh, they, they form a tube of a single cell type, which are fibroblasts, and then in a 